TXRX combiners are used in communication systems to feed multiple transmitters through the combiner to a single feed line and to a single antenna, reducing the cost of the system, reducing wind loading on the tower, lowering installation time, and lessening the impact of weather on antennas and feed line. Combiner design is introduced here by discussing the different types of combiners as well as basic functionality and terminology. An index of topics included in this section is listed here and will be helpful in finding specific topics for review. Slides 3 and 4 will discuss the purpose of a combiner. Slides 5 and 6 will cover basic combiner theory. Slide 7 is a summary of combiner types. Slides 8 and 9 discuss hybrid combiners. Slides 10 through 12 have information about star junction combiners. Slides 13 through 15 cover T-pass combiners. And slide 16 has more information about additional training and contact information. Combiners are used at communication sites to connect multiple transmitters to one feed line and one antenna. This helps reduce tower loading and the impact of wind on the tower and equipment mounted on it. Many towers are loaded, supporting all the antennas and feed line that they can under local wind conditions. TXRX Systems designs and builds combiners, which put the output of multiple transmitters onto one feed line going to one antenna. A combiner also acts as a filter to reduce unwanted transmitter noise. All amplifiers produce noise, which is added to the signal. The combiner reduces transmitter noise and protects receive frequencies from that noise. Several factors are used to measure signal loss in a combiner, cavity and cable loss and bridging loss. Cavity loss is how much of the signal is reduced as it travels through a cavity. Bridging loss is how much energy is coupled or bridged into adjacent channels. By adding cavity loss to bridging loss, design engineers calculate the insertion loss of each channel going through the combiner. TXRX Systems has been producing high quality, low loss combiners since 1976, holding early patents for those systems. Land Mobile Radio is designed for strong, consistent communications by police, fire and EMS, military and other government agencies. Radios are being used by hotel staff, security and casinos, malls and sports arenas, and in commercial applications. All systems are planned based on coverage, which starts with high selectivity and the power output of the transmitters. Low loss combiners help ensure that coverage is maximized. Combiner selectivity tells us how well the combiner passes signals with minimum loss into other channels. Keeping selectivity high results in more transmitter noise being filtered and a lower risk of interference from outside signals. In some frequency ranges, such as 7, 8, or 900 megahertz systems, channels are laid out for easy combining. At VHF and UHF frequencies, combining is more difficult. Each TXRX combiner at VHF and UHF will be unique based on the channels in the system. The frequency plan must be reviewed to see if it results in intermodulation. Transmitter noise must be evaluated for maximum sideband noise suppression. The receive side of a system must be protected to be certain that coverage will not be reduced through desensitization of receivers. Systems with close space transmit and receive frequencies will require more filtering. This example shows the filtering needed to protect the receive channels from the sideband noise of the transmitter. The combiner also reduces the transmit carriers below subscriber levels. The impact of the transmit signals on the receive channels must be considered during the design phase. Some radio manufacturers recommend that transmit carriers be kept below the NEG 55 dBm and that sideband noise be reduced by a minimum of 45 dB to ensure maximum sensitivity. Combiner design is limited to how much insertion loss can be tolerated and still achieve coverage goals. Each component adds insertion loss and reduces the amount of power. 
so all connectors, cables, isolators, cavities, and other equipment in the signal path must be added to determine total loss. Channel spacing will drastically impact the design size and cost of a combiner. The closer together channels are spaced, the higher the amount of filtering required to achieve proper isolation, or larger cavities will be needed. The number of channels in a system greatly impacts the design and cost as well. Combiners and the entire transmit or receive system may be considered a network used to distribute radio signals to system users. If the combiner is examined as a network or electrical circuit, filter impedance is high off frequency and matched on frequency. To the signal labeled transmit 1, all components in series are matched while those in parallel are high impedance and represent the other channels in the system. These high impedances act as a traffic manager, directing the signal away from the other channels in a combiner and to the antenna. The frequency separation of the channels plays a very important part in determining insertion loss and bridging loss. Insertion loss of a filter is directly related to the impedance that it shows to other components in the system. When a combiner carries close spaced frequencies, individual cavities need to be set up with higher isolation, which results in higher insertion loss. Coverage requirements will limit how much insertion loss can be tolerated. Combiner design is a balancing act between tolerable loss, isolation requirements, cost, and size. Many times cost will limit what can be done, but physics and the frequency plan dictate the outcome. This section will not go into detail on combiner design, but will be an introduction into basic characteristics and terminology. The three combiner types listed are basic configurations, and a combiner may be a combination of any of these types to achieve the signal integration required. A hybrid combiner uses hybrid couplers or splitters to achieve their goal. They are simple and compact, but are associated with higher loss and may not be the right choice for a system. Star junction combiners use a central coupler with multiple connectors often laid out in a star configuration on a single connector body. They are a well-established system, can be quite compact, but may require additional steps to be modified for future changes. The T-Pass combiner is a TXRX brand name for the system developed in 1976. The system uses specialized loops on the cavities and cables cut to specific lengths in the final series of connections in the combiner. The combiner is easily changed or expanded for future frequency changes or additions. Each of the three combiner types has advantages and disadvantages, and knowing them will help in deciding which is right for your system. Hybrid combiners can be used when transmit channels are close together in frequency. Other combiners may require 150 to 250 kilohertz spacing between channels, but hybrids will combine frequencies with little or no spacing. Hybrids are built with couplers and cables and are easily expanded. They do require the use of isolators, as do all combiners. Think of an isolator as a one-way valve, keeping the signals moving from transmitter to antenna and keeping other signals received on the transmit antenna from reaching the finals of the transmitter. A hybrid may also be used to link closely spaced signals into other combiners that cannot handle close spacing. The drawback to using hybrids is that they have high losses. As in all splitters or couplers, the best that can be done is a 3 dB loss per leg for a 50-50 split coupler. Two hybrid couplers were used in this design. The first coupler is labeled as a 3-3 coupler, meaning that half of the power goes to the load where it is lost. The output of the first transmitter goes through the isolator to port 2 of the hybrid. It travels through the hybrid to the output port 1, but half the power is coupled to the load on port 4. The signal from the second transmitter enters port 3 and goes to the load on port 4. Half of the power of transmit 2 is combined with the signal already on the through line from transmit 1 and travels with it 
to the output port, port 2. The combined signal from transmitter 1 and 2 then go to the second coupler, which is a 1848 coupler. The first and second transmitters have seen a power reduction of 3 dB going through the first coupler. They enter port 2 of the second hybrid and continue to port 1, but see a loss of 1.8 dB coupled into the load. Total loss of the first two transmitters is now 4.8 dB. A third transmitter is connected to the second input of the hybrid coupler, and its signal continues to port 4, the 50 ohm load. Part of the signal is coupled to the first two signals on the through line with a 4.8 dB reduction and continue to the output port of the coupler and on to the antenna. All three signals now see a 4.8 dB loss and reach the antenna with equal power. The 4.8 dB loss means that 67% of the power of all three signals is lost into the loads. Hybrid couplers are not filters and will need a second harmonic or other post filter to protect systems from harmful interference generated. The second type of combiner covered here is a star junction combiner. This type is used in many systems by several manufacturers and may also be used with other combiners. The combiner is designed around a multi-port coupler called a star junction as the port arrangement resembles a star. It is made of a housing with the output connector coming out of the center and input connectors around the outside of the junction. Each of the input connectors is arranged on a T connection inside the star junction body with multiple T's then summed to the output connector. The number of junctions or ports varies. The junction must be rated for higher power and exhibit constant impedance. The cables from the output of each transmitter are averaged or of a compromised length and act as a matching network allowing signals of proper frequencies to pass. Averaging cable lengths versus frequency does result in one practical limitation for the star junction combiner. The frequency range of those channels going through the combiner will be limited to how much impedance mismatch can be tolerated in the combiner due to the averaging process. Star junction combiners can be in many different forms, not just a single junction with cavities or filters attached. The junction may have different numbers of ports. Cables are manufactured to the average length of the frequencies going through the combiner. Cavities are tuned to the frequencies of the transmitters and then the signals travel through the cabling to the star junction where they combine and travel to the transmit antenna. Other types of couplers may be used in star junction combiners to further combine individual sections. A four channel and three channel star junction are shown being combined through the T coupler into a single output feeding the antenna. Be careful not to exceed the power limits of the antennas, any connectors in the system after the star junction or any other component in the system. When compared to hybrid combiners, the star junction has lower insertion loss per channel. Combiner losses in star junction combiners include the isolators used on each channel, filter losses, and any cable or connector losses. The loss from the star junction is either measured or calculated and added to the insertion loss budget. Star junction combiners are easily expanded mechanically. If all the ports on the star are used, channels can be added after the junction by using a T or other coupler in the output feed line. Be very careful in expanding a star junction combiner, contacting the manufacturer as all the cables and cavities interact and may reduce the output power if not carefully designed. Care must be exercised when expanding the combiner or in removing or changing channel frequencies. A change in frequency will require cable lengths to be recalculated and should be done by the combiner manufacturer. The third type of combiner is the T-Pass combiner originally developed and patented by TXRX Systems in 1976. The technique uses a special coupling loop in the output of the final cavity of each channel and couples the signal to the next cavity carrying the next channel. The same technique is then repeated for the number of channels in a system. 
by using a short circuit on the output loop of the first channel, the signal is reflected or moved up the stack and all channels appear at the final output connector of the combiner. T-pass combiners use cable lengths in the final leg of the combiner that are cut to specific lengths by frequency. So be careful with changes in the combiner, channel additions, frequency changes, and retuning. The manufacturer should be contacted to calculate the new cable lengths and provide the new cables. Cable lengths must include the cables, electrical connector length, and the loop length of the final T-pass loop in the final cavity of each branch. These diagrams show two T-pass combiner designs. Systems will differ based on their frequency plan. The combiner on the left uses single T-pass cavities with bandpass loops on the input and T-pass loops on the output of each cavity. The diagram shows the calculations to determine the critical length cables, all based on half wavelength intervals. The L2 cable length is matched to the transmit 1 frequency, 160 MHz, at half wavelength and includes the lengths of the short and the T-pass loop at the output of C1. The signal enters C1 at P1, is filtered by the cavity, and output by the T-pass coupler. The connector loop at the bottom has a short circuit connected to it, so the signal reflects off the short and travels up the cable to the output loop of C2, where it combines with the signal passing through C2. The length of cable L3 is calculated for the transmit 2 frequency at a full wavelength and includes the length of L2, the T-pass loop, and the short circuit length. Since it reflects the short at the output of C1 up the stack, it moves the signal through the rest of the output loops and cables to the antenna. The drawing on the right illustrates that T-pass combiners may be any combination of different cavities, including bandpass notch or very notch. The same principles apply, with the short circuit at the bottom being transferred up the stack. Insertion loss or combiner loss will be dependent upon how many cavities are used and how much isolation is required. TXRX T-pass combiners offer advantages over other combiner types. T-pass combiners have lower insertion loss than hybrid combiners. Channels can be added by adding cavities and cables without changing the entire combiner, as in star junction combiners. T-pass combiners are easily expanded, retuned, or reconfigured, and T-pass combiners have no maximum total combiner bandwidth limit as star junctions do. Insertion loss in a T-pass combiner is directly proportional to the channel separation in the system's frequency plan. The closer together the channels are, the more isolation required, the more insertion loss results. All cavity combiners have minimum channel spacing limitations dependent on cavity size. A properly laid out frequency plan plus a properly designed T-pass combiner will offer very low insertion loss, a great amount of flexibility, and a very stable long-term operation. Thank you for being part of this training module. This section was intended as an introduction to combiners and how they are used in land mobile radio systems. More training modules are available in support of this and other topics specific to products manufactured by TXRX Systems. The material is available in short versions and in longer half-day, full-day, and two-day classes. Visit our website at txrx.com for more information. Training is also available at TXRX Systems 8625 Industrial Parkway, Angola, New York, or if your group or shop is large enough, we will bring the training to you. Please call 716-549-4700 to discuss fees and scheduling. Again, thank you for being part of this presentation, and we do invite you back.